discuss so how is the ulnar nerve formed i gave you a code when we were discussing brachial plexus like uh, we have how many cords like lateral cord medial cord and the posterior cord so from the medial cord i told you we have a code like 4m u u is actually standing for ulnar nerve so it is formed from the medial cord of the brachial plexus in the axilla region and generally you will not see the force here because it is situated very much below this axillary artery you need to just lift the axillary artery in order to check for the ulnar nerve the root value of ulnar nerve is c8 and t1 okay so we are going to see its course in the axilla we will see its course in the middle of the forearm and also in the arm okay so actually its distribution in palm is very very important i'll take you step wise i'll take you to another four point for this um, now see here ulnar nerve is uh, the major terminal branches of brachial plexus okay i hope you are seeing the same four point okay so and it is the continuation of medial cord of the brachial plexus which arises from the anterior division of lower trunk okay root value you just remember c8 and t1 you need not remember more than this okay then so this is actually the line diagram of brachial plexus which i have already explained you with a better picture in my previous class so we have to check the ulnar nerve cords from the cord to the axilla so the ulnar nerve runs between the axillary artery and axillary vein in the axilla course from axilla to arm from the axilla it enters into the arm and stays between brachial artery and brachial vein okay so this is brachial plexus how is it formed like c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 so the root c5 c6 they join to form upper trunk c7 continues as middle trunk c8 and t1 they form the lower trunk from upper trunk we have two divisions i said isn't it what are those the anterior and posterior divisions the posterior divisions of all the three that means upper trunk middle trunk and lower trunk they form the posterior cord isn't it the anterior division of uh, this you will see the mid upper trunk uh, and the middle trunk they join to form the lateral cord and the anterior division of the lower trunk continues as medial cord the previous picture was better what i have explained you this is little not so good okay so from the like axilla it has reached the arm from the arm it will be reaching the forearm okay so before it reaches the forearm it is moving through the elbow so the nerve runs inferior and posterior of the medial aspect of the humerus bone till it enters the cubital tunnel cubital tunnel is nothing but cubital fossa okay then in the arm throughout the course the nerve is running superficially and innervates no muscle at all okay i will tell you with the help of pictures you will understand better now it's only theoretical aspect you are seeing see here in the four in the arm we have muscles like what are the muscles biceps brachia we have we have brachialis we have coracoid brachialis there it is not giving any nerve supply it just passes there the ulnar nerve is passing there okay it is uh, like uh, piercing the lateral intermuscular septum and then it is entering into the anterior compartment of the cubital fossa and then you will see it will be now reaching the cubital fossa and it is supplying the muscles of forearm okay see the course of uh, course from elbow to forearm is actually this ulnar nerve is lying in a groove that is behind the condyle which is formed by the medial condyle of the humerus that means it is passing just behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus and olecranon process of the ulna sometimes if we keep like this what happens when it slips usually it makes us laugh or something tingling sensation happens that's the reason the humerus is called as funny bone because the nerve ulnar nerve becomes cutaneous and it is seen just behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus and olecranon process of ulna okay then it enters into the forearm through the aponeurotic arcade i'll show you like how it is entering into the cubital fossa see here this is our ulnar nerve okay 
so it has traveled from the axilla then from the axilla it has entered into the arm now it is passing behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus olecranon process of the ulna then it is successfully entering into the forearm okay so this is the entry of ulnar nerve into the forearm so once it is entering into the forearm it is supplying only two muscles of forearm okay the two muscles will be the flexor digitorum profundus is there flexor carpi ulnaris and also flexor digitorum superficialis only medial half of these muscles are supplied by ulnar nerve rest all muscles of forearm are supplied by median nerve basic distribution of ulnar nerve is seen in the palm that's why ulnar nerve is concerned with the uh, like uh, nerve supply of chief muscles of the palm hence it is called as musician's nerve musician's nerve chief nerve supply of it comes in the palm so ulnar nerve is entering the flexor compartment of forearm through two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris it is running along the medial side of the forearm you can see little finger is medial side you can see it is moving along the medial side of the forearm running between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris supplying flexor carpi ulnaris okay innervates in the sense it supplies the flexor carpi ulnaris and also medial half of flexor digitorum profundus okay only these two muscles are supplied okay now this is uh, and this is actually little misleading color has been used we should never use blue color to represent nerves okay so but still in order to understand let us make use of this picture so we have ulnar nerve which is shown in dark blue color here we know like ulnar nerve is coming from the medial cord of the brachial plexus root value is c8 and t1 and is entering into the axilla okay very close to the axillary artery and vein and then it is entering into the arm and in arm it is related to the brachial artery and vein then it is going behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus okay this is the humerus bone this is the medial side because you are finding ulna is the medial bone radius is the lateral bone here so it is going behind the medial epicondyle okay then it is successfully entering into the forearm when it is entering into the forearm it is supplying flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor digitorum profundus only the medial half not complete muscle only the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus then further nerve supply of this ulnar nerve is entering into palm that means it is chiefly supplying the muscles of palm we have thenar muscles and we have hypothenar muscles those are chiefly supplied by the ulnar nerve okay so the course from forearm to wrist so we have dorsal this i will show you with the help of picture like this you will not understand so dorsal cutaneous branch of the ulnar nerve dorsal cutaneous in the sense it is going and supplying the skin so which area of the skin you are finding this is the dorsum of the hand so in the dorsum of the hand two and half digits are almost supplied by the ulnar nerve okay and when you see the palmar cutaneous branch it is supplying only one and half digit so that is the superficial palmar branch of the ulnar nerve supplies one and half digits rest of three and half digit comes from median nerve what happens if ulnar nerve is damaged i told you there is a condition called as claw hand okay claw hand so this i will help you with the help of diagrams this is all theory theory which is difficult to understand get back to this power point also but we will see more of uh, diagrams to make you understand medial nerve and axial nerve see these are just focus on diagrams now i told you it is coming from the medial cord of brachial plexus this is our axillary artery and this is our axillary nerve and this nerve this is our ulnar nerve which is seen going deep to the axillary artery and axillary vein when it is coming into the arm it is closely related to the continuation of axillary artery is brachial artery ma'am your powerpoint did not uh, okay okay shared okay. ma'am okay okay i'm resharing beta thank you 
let me just go back again so now can you see the powerpoint ha yes ma'am this is from the medial cord of the brachial plexus you will see this is exactly the ulnar nerve where i'm keeping the arrow which is below the axillary vein okay its course is much behind okay so from the axilla region this ulnar nerve now will enter into the arm so when it is entering into the arm what is the name of this artery now axillary artery is continuation is brachial artery okay and then we have the corresponding veins so this ulnar nerve it goes deep to the brachial vein and also the brachial artery okay no further course no see here i told you it pierces the medial intermuscular septum it is not supplying any of the muscle of the arm it is going behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus okay once it goes here only its course is very much superficial and it causes tingling sensation when we keep our hand over the table that's why humerus is called as funny bone okay so this ulnar nerve going behind the medial epicondyle now it is successfully entering into the forearm so when it is entering into the forearm these are the two muscles you are seeing this muscle is flexor carpi ulnaris the thin one okay and this is flexor digitorum profundus so it runs between these two muscles flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor digitorum profundus supplying these two muscles here we have flexor retinaculum in front of the wrist joint here we have flexor retinaculum so it is going deep to that and then it is successfully entering into the palm okay so it is basically supplying the intrinsic muscles of palm we have thenar group of muscles we have hypothenar group of muscles we have lumbricals we have palmar and dorsal interosseae so many muscles are there in the palm they are all supplied by the ulnar nerve ulnar nerve is not intended to supply any of the region of either forearm or arm basic function of this ulnar nerve is to supply in the palm exceptions are in the forearm it is supplying these two muscles flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor digitorum profundus okay so now once you see it has successfully entered into the palm don't read anything i'll try to make you understand with the help of picture so little finger is medial side and ulnar nerve is on medial side this is our median nerve forget about median nerve now this is median nerve we will discuss later as an essay answer so now this is our ulnar nerve which is supplying on the medial aspect ulna bone is on medial side no hence ulnar nerve is also on medial side little finger is medial side i am giving you so many clues so ulnar nerve is passing this is our flexor retinaculum it is going deep inside then you see this is our superficial branch so superficial branch is dividing into one it is going and supplying see one is the medial side it goes and supplies the medial aspect of the little finger okay this is common digital nerve okay this is also one more common palmar digital nerve which divides at the interdigital cleft into two branches okay one is supplying the lateral aspect of little finger and the other is supplying the medial aspect of ring finger okay so this is only these one and half digits are supplied by superficial branch of ulnar nerve i'm repeating again the superficial branch is giving direct supply to the medial aspect of little finger okay through uh, like uh, palmar digital branch so the next branch is common palmar digital branch okay which is actually dividing at the interdigital cleft into proper palmar digital branches one is this supplying the lateral aspect of little finger and the other one is supplying the medial aspect of ring finger only these one and half digits are supplied by ulnar nerve okay so actually here it is shown like the basically this superficial branch is passing superficial to the flexor retinaculum whatever you have seen here is the superficial branch okay then so superficial branch is the going at this is directly i said it is supplying the medial proper digital branch this one okay then lateral common palmar digital nerve this is common palmar digital nerve which divides at the interdigital cleft into 
proper palm are digital nerves. One and two are proper palm are digital nerves. Okay. So actually, this deep palm are branch. So deep, don't read anything, but I'll just see superficial branch we have dealt now. See, this is our deep palm are branch which is going and supplying deeper inside to the intrinsic muscles of palm. Don't focus on this nerve. This is median nerve. We are talking only about deep branch of ulnar nerve. Deep branch of ulnar nerve is going deep to the concavity of deep arch, arterial arch of the palm, and it will be supplying the muscles of palm. I'll give you. I'll give you the list of muscles. In the thenar, we have abductor pollicis brevis. Okay. Then we have opponent's pollicis and we have flexor pollicis. In other PowerPoint, we have the list of muscles also there. Okay. So in the forearm, what are the muscles supplied? I said flexor carpi ulnaris and medial half of flexor digitorum profundus. So in the hand, all intrinsic muscles of the palm except. Three thinar muscles and first and second lumbricals. The, the these thinar like thumb is thinar, right? These thinar muscles and first two lumbricals are actually supplied from median nerve. So rest all muscles are actually supplied by ulnar nerve. I'll give you the list. So after that we will see the cutaneous branches. So cutaneous branches, whatever is shaded with blue color, you draw same like this. So palmar cutaneous branch, it is giving nerve supply to one and a half digit from the palmar aspect and one and a half digit from the dorsal aspect. This is palmar aspect, this is dorsal aspect, simple way. Okay, now see here, the summary of distribution of ulnar nerve, it supplies, what are the muscles in forearm? Two muscles, I said, flexor carpi ulnaris, medial half of flexor digitorum profundus. And all intrinsic muscles of hand except three thinar muscles of the <coughs> thumb region and first two lumbricals. Okay, then only one and a half digits, that is, it supplies the skin of medial one and a half fingers. So because it is supplying the fine intrinsic muscles of palm, you call this nerve as musician's nerve, musician's nerve. So that means in order to do fine movements, like writing, playing music, we require fine muscular movements of these palmar muscles. Okay, hence it is called as musician's nerve. So what happens if this ulnar nerve, medial aspect, ulnar nerve is damaged, it will lead to partial claw hand like this. If medial nerve is damaged, then it is complete claw hand. Okay, so medial two fingers are extended. This is the extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint. They are extended at metacarpophalangeal joint and they are partially flexed at this joint, interphalangeal joints due to partial or complete denervation of the third and fourth lumbricals, okay? And due to paralysis of palmar and dorsal interosseae. So this condition is called as claw hand, okay? Sometimes it may get trapped over in the cubital fossa. If it is getting trapped in the cubital fossa, you call it as cubital tunnel syndrome, okay? So that after that you have read enough, but before that I'll give you the list of muscles. I hope you are able to see the muscles which are supplied by the ulnar nerve list. See, if in the forearm, we have flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor digitorum profundus. These are the two muscles which are supplied by ulnar nerve. In the thenar group, basically, we in the thenar, uh, we do not have any muscles. I said in the hypothenar, what are the muscles? Again, we have abductor digiti minimae, flexor digiti minimae, and opponents digiti minimae. These are the <clears throat> three muscles which are supplied by ulnar nerve. In the thenar group, two exceptions, we have adductor pollicis and flexor pollicis brevis. They are supplied by ulnar nerve, okay? So we have four dorsal interosseae, four palmar interosseae. They are also supplied by ulnar nerve. Only third and fourth lumbricals are supplied by ulnar nerve, okay? So hypothenar group of muscles are these, abductor digitae minimae, opponents digitae minimae and flexor digitae minimae. These are the muscles of hypothenar group. Okay, you can take the picture of this list 
these are the muscles which are seen in the palm and these are the muscles which are supplied by ulnar nerve because ulnar nerve is supplying all muscles of the palm except few muscles of the thenar group hence this nerve is called as musician's nerve okay and damage to this nerve will result in claw hand okay so that is all about ulnar nerve beta so ulnar nerve is usual essay so study nicely from appendix part of your textbooks but not uh, like because uh, ulnar nerve explanation is given like in the forearm part of it is given in the palm it is given it is it is given in the arm don't read like that in the last chapters of uh, chaurasya or vishram singh you have appendix chapter there all nerves are summarized you can read it from there and explanation i have given very clearly so then we yes ma'am so lacrimal apparatus is an apparatus which is situated in the orbit first of all you have to get oriented to which part of the eyeball we are seeing see here this is our eyeball suppose now uh, which i suppose you are sitting right in front of me so this is your left eye okay so in the left eye what you are seeing at the corner of your left eye you are finding there is one lacrimal gland that means inside the orbit here exactly in our orbital fossa we have lacrimal gland okay so this lacrimal gland is concerned with the secretion of tears so it has two parts if you observe it has the part of the lacrimal gland which is fixed in the orbit bone you call it as orbital part and the part of the lacrimal gland which is associated with the lid upper lid you call it as palpebral part so we have orbital part and we have palpebral part okay so from the orbital and palpebral part if you observe you have ducts coming okay these are called as lacrimal ducts so basically lacrimal gland is concerned with the production of tears so tears are basically keeping eyeball in moist condition our eyeball is not dry it is always maintained in moist condition and of course when we become emotionally upset this lacrimal glands will produce more tears and the tears are expressed through like they just fall out from our conjunctival sac and when we like cry more you will see i told you we have naso lacrimal duct opening in the inferior meatus when i have shown you the lateral wall of the Uh, nose there i have told you the inferior nasal concha you will see the opening of the naso lacrimal duct so let us see the components again so lacrimal gland a part of it is present in the orbit that is orbital part a part of it is present in the lids you call it as palpebral part so orbital part and palpebral part via lacrimal ducts they are opening into this conjunctival sac okay and here you have lacrimal Uh, this area is lacrimal punctum from here tears are collected into canals this violet canals they are called as lacrimal canaliculi from the lacrimal canaliculi you will see this is naso lacrimal duct okay so naso lacrimal duct is quite lengthy duct before it opens you see there is a sac which is called as lacrimal sac then naso lacrimal duct where is the naso lacrimal duct opening into the nose to be more specific it is opening in the inferior meatus which is seen below inferior nasal concha okay so again this is the other side picture is shown beta now this is your right eye okay and here this is our orbital part and this is palpebral part both are separated by means of a muscle called as levator palpebrae superioris with this muscle we have studied when we were doing extra ocular muscles isn't it then these are the lacrimal ducts and this is our conjunctival sac okay lacrimal punctum from here the tears are entering into the lacrimal canaliculi small canal is called as canaliculi from here into lacrimal sac naso lacrimal duct which opens into inferior meatus of nose and this naso lacrimal duct is guarded by a valve the name of the valve is hasner's valve okay hasner's valve so many diagrams i put whichever is easy for you you can study and this is netter's atlas image this is orbit orbit bone in the orbit bone you have this 
orbital part. In the lid, we have palpebral part, and these are lacrimal ducts. This is our conjunctival sac. Lacrimal punctum, lacrimal canaliculi, lacrimal sac, nasolacrimal duct, inferior meatus, guarded by Hassner's valve. Okay, so that is all about lacrimal gland and lacrimal apparatus. Okay, so what is our question exactly? What did he ask us? So lacrimal apparatus. That means you should completely write about this. Okay. So all these components you should write better when I draw a very well labeled diagram of lacrimal apparatus. Okay. So lacrimal gland secretes tears and the ducts are conveying them into the conjunctival sac. Whatever I told you with the help of diagram is written here. So we have orbital part and palpebral part. Both are separated by means of a muscle that is levator palpebrae superioris. This is the levator palpebrae superioris separating the orbital and palpebral part. Okay, overall the shape of the gland is almond shaped and it is situated in the roof of the orbit. There is a fossa called as lacrimal fossa on the anterior lateral part of the roof of the orbit. Okay, that is the orbital part. Relations are, it is about to it, you will see it is related to levator palpebrae superioris and in front it is relating uh, related to orbital septum and behind lot of fat will be there that is orbital fat. Small part is palpebral part, isn't it? So it is below what is the muscle which is which was making a partition levator palpebrae superioris so it is seen below levator palpebrae superioris and this is actually reaching up to the conjunctival fornix so this is superior fornix okay from here if you just count these lines these are lacrimal ducts they will be around 12 lacrimal ducts they are opening into the superior fornix of conjunctiva so because the palpebral part is showing these lacrimal ducts, if you remove the palpebral part, that is equivalent to removal of entire gland. Because even if orbital part is there, ducts are only opening via palpebral part. If that means if you remove palpebral part, that means you are removing the entire gland. Though you are keeping the orbital part as it is during surgery, it cannot release the tears, okay? I'll show you with the help of better picture. See here, beta, this is our palpebral part and ducts are here. So if you remove palpebral parts, ducts are also gone. If you keep this orbital part also, no use because there are no ducts which are opening into this conjunctival sac. This is the superior fornix of the conjunctival sac where the tears are being released to maintain the eyeball in a moist condition. Okay. So suppose if we remove this uh, lacrimal gland because of some clinical pathology, despite of that also eyeball will be maintained in moist condition. How is that possible? Because we have other glands which are called as accessory lacrimal glands. They are very much small and they are actually situated very close to our eyelids. Okay. So very much small and they are around 35 to 40 in number. So though you remove the lacrimal gland, these glands will take the in charge of keeping the eyeball in moist condition. All these details are not uh, required but uh, So functions of tear is like it flushes the conjunctival sac. Okay. It provides nourishment to the cornea and it keeps the cornea moist. It has many bactericidal enzymes and it kills the bacteria also. And of course, when we are emotionally upset, we cry, isn't it? That's how we express our feelings. So these are all not required, but I don't want to trouble you unnecessarily. The blood supply of lacrimal apparatus comes from internal carotid artery. When I was talking about scalp, I told you about supratrochlear, supraorbital arteries are the branches of ophthalmic artery. The same ophthalmic artery is actually supplying the lacrimal gland also, okay? From ophthalmic artery, we have lacrimal artery. Venous drainage through lacrimal vein, it drains into superior ophthalmic vein and then into angular vein. Lymphatic drainage, from here, the lymph is moving to from here to here, very close by. Whichever lymph node is close, there only it will drain. So it is going to pre-auricular group of lymph nodes. For nerve supply, such a big story, you don't write. You just write lacrimal nerve. Apparatus is lacrimal apparatus, no? So lacrimal nerve from ophthalmic division of trigeminal. That is more than enough beta. This is not required, okay? 
so many details will make you mad not required also okay so inflammation of lacrimal sac you can write one clinical point inflammation of lacrimal sac is actually called as dacrocystitis okay so the eye becomes red in color so if uh, there is excessive secretion of tears you call that condition as epiphora that is watery eye all these things you will study again in your third year ophthalmology exclusively so many lessons and details are there okay if lacrimal gland is not functioning you call that condition as dry eye syndrome xerophthalmia vitamin a deficiency in such case we need to use artificial tear drops otherwise the eye becomes dry and keratomalacia bite out spots and so many other conditions may develop this condition is calazion okay so many are not required beta you can actually i don't want to overload you with uh, extra knowledge basically we require things now to come out of our pain okay what is the action of lumbricals where do you find lumbricals the lumbrical muscles are actually earthworm like muscles what we see between the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus you can see this picture much more clearly so these tendons whatever you are finding in gray color these are the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus so in between these muscles you will see these are lumbricals okay so this from the thumb if you count first two lumbricals are supplied by median nerve second two lumbricals are supplied by ulnar nerve they flex the metacarpophalangeal joints and extend interphalangeal joints you can check in your palm chapter this is given flex the metacarpophalangeal and extend interphalangeal joint the link may go better winging of scapula long thoracic nerve this is due to the damage of uh, long thoracic nerve supplying the serratus anterior i'll show you again i'll send you the link few more questions are there you will not understand any no so what is in uh, are like uh, rotator cuff where do you see rotator cuff muscles you see